Hi Aries, welcome to your January and February 2018 Bliss Report. And this is what I formerly called my Abundance or Prosperity Report. And the reason I changed the name is that I want to kind of broaden the scope instead of just talking about, oh, what, you know, when is going to be a good time for you to make money or to have good things in your career? Are you going to be able, be able to have them? In the next couple of months, I wanted to kind of get you thinking about how you would follow your bliss. What are the things that make you happy that you would like to pursue in 2018? And this particular report is for the first two months, so I will be doing more of these. But I don't want to just look at it from the perspective of kind of the financial arena. And I'm not going to be covering love because I do separate love readings every month. Those readings should be out in about a week, give or take, give or take a couple of days. So I want to just focus on your dreams and what you would like to bring into your reality in 2018, but that could have nothing to do with the money that you earn, the job title that you hold. You may be perfectly fine in whatever it is that you're doing and you've resigned yourself to the fact that you're going to be doing this probably for the rest of your working life and that's fine if it doesn't bother you to go to a particular office you may have come to terms with this somewhere along the line that you were comfortable in this particular groove and that you just want to stay there because you feel a sense of continuity and maybe there are other things though that you want to achieve that are separate from this and so that's kind of what where this is going and I actually prefer these types of readings than a straight forecast because I think that people get too caught up in dates and predictions and it really takes away your own um, sense of you know, what you are going to do about a situation, your initiative. And I think it's very important to encourage initiative because so many times with tarot readings, astrology readings, it can give people license to be passive and to then blame a certain transit for their failures. And I just think that's not really a good thing at all. For me to promote either. So I have three different decks that I'm going to be drawing cards from. And I will, you know, go into that in a minute. But I did want to read a quote that I had chosen specifically for your sign, Aries. And it, it happens to deal with patience. Because I think that this is one area where Aries people can shoot themselves in the foot is being too impatient and whether it's with another person being too pushy and then the other person is driven away or trying to make something happen and it's just not flowing properly. This is by Osho who was a very profound teacher in my opinion. And I'm not going to read all of it, but one of the things he, he mentions is about, he goes, there are trees in America thousands of years old. They take such a long time to grow that the seed remains under the soil for years before it sprouts. I didn't know that. I didn't know that uh, some trees are, you know, they, they don't uh, germinate for so long. The baser, pleasures, the baser pleasures of this life are quickly attainable but they vanish as quickly. Remember the equation, the quicker attained, the earlier lost. If you want to attain God, you will have to practice infinite patience. And remember another fact, the more patiently you observe, the earlier you attain. The more you rush, the later you attain. You are the cause of the delay. Why does this happen? Because the more patient you are, the deeper inside you go. Impatience is characteristic of a shallow person. It is a sign of childishness. 
When little children plant a mango seed, after an hour they take it out to see whether it has sprouted yet. Then they put it back in the soil. Again, they remove it to see whether it has sprouted, and again they return it to the soil. That seed will never sprout. So the point is, is that at a certain point, you have to allow for things to take on their own. And that requires patience, and I think patience requires faith. And it's possible that some Aries people are, are a little bit too pushy because they don't believe that it's going to happen. But also because you happen to be very enthusiastic about life and you want things to transpire. You're very future-oriented. But learning how to be in the now moment, the eternal now moment, the only moment we really have, is, I think, crucial for attaining both peace and the ultimate type of success, which is your own personal um, success. You know, coming from the standpoint that you have, not society's standards of like what they deem to be perfect. Okay, so we're going to start with the tarot deck. Just do a very simple spread. I'll explain it after I've done it. Again, this is for January and February. Okay, and I'm going to just cut this deck, the Keepers of the Light, Green Terra, Supreme Protection, and then one from the Akashic Tarot, which is actually a different type of deck. It's not really a standard type reflection. All right, number 19. So I'll read those after these tarot cards. So the theme or heart of the matter for January and February is the Three of Wands. Perfect card for Aries, fire energy, wanting more, wanting expansion, maybe wanting to broaden your scope if you do have some kind of a business that reaches international stages and, uh, and new countries to conquer in terms of selling your product or even just traveling for the sake of wanting, you know, following your bliss. Maybe that's just something that you have been wanting to do and you feel that if you take a certain trip that it is going to benefit you in some way, that it's maybe even life-changing. And what I, what I would say to you in 2018, Aries, is that coming off of last year, you did have Saturn in your ninth house in Sagittarius, okay? Now it's in your career sector, so you may be really feeling like this is ample opportunity to even turn it up a notch and, and accomplish some things that will have long-term benefits for you, and that's great. But please also understand that now that Saturn has left that ninth house, it's going to remove obstacles that might have been there. There may have been some reason, cosmic reason, why if you felt thwarted about doing this type of traveling in the last few years, that it occurred. And now there's a green light, but especially at the end of 2018, starting around November 8th or so, Jupiter is going to go in Sagittarius, its own sign. So it will be in that ninth house, and that will increase the amount of opportunities for, for foreign travel the way that you have been 
possibly restricted in that area for the last few years. So, but even now you may feel kind of a freeing up in that regard. In the past position, we have the Queen of Cups. And this is, um, if this is a facet of you, this may be that you felt a certain amount of um, intuitive ability being poured into you, maybe downloads. You've had Uranus in your sign for several years now. And in 2018, Uranus is going to actually go into Taurus. So that will be your second house, but it will be going back into your sign at some point. I, I looked it up and then I forgot when this was all happening. But in 2019, it will permanent, permanently be leaving your, your first house. But for some areas, you may have had um, psychic experiences. Uranus can bring that sort of thing. Now, it is a different sort of vibe than the Queen of Cups. It's not so touchy-feely in that sense. It's much more of a... I would look at it as the kind of... This is like much more softer and gentler than just having uh, telepathy. So this may also relate to any Aries women who gave birth and this has softened you up, but you may have also felt this need to leave your local environment for some reason. You may have a calling, feel a pull to another part of the world and perhaps that is feeling like a conflict to you because you have parents who want to see your child and maybe you're getting pressure from other people. If you haven't discussed this with anyone, it's probably a good idea if you're making plans not to do so because you, you will get people who will probably try to discourage you. But some of you may really have had, have talked to people. It's very hard for Aries people to keep things to themselves. So you may have announced to everyone that you want to move. And if this is not overseas, you may want to move just to the other side of whatever country you're in or something where it's a dramatic change geographically. That could be connected to business as well, but either way. And been met with resistance. In the past, the Queen of Cups can just have made you more sensitive overall and made you aware of, you know, getting in touch with your feelings more because Aries is very active and, you know, it's very possible for Aries people to not take the time to really feel their feelings because they're too busy acting on them. And the feelings that you're having that you're acting upon can be very fleeting. And that's what I'm talking about. And that's what that quote was talking about. The things that are easily attained, they're usually very short lasting. So if you have, it's like kind of an easy sort of emotional high that is not really based upon something that is permanent, something that is going to bring you happiness over the long haul. And this is kind of further evidenced by the spiritual message, which is four of cups. And this is about dissatisfaction. So you may have gotten in touch with your feelings and admitted to yourself that you weren't happy, that things were just stag stagnant for you. And this is the kiss of death for Aries because you always want to keep advancing, moving, not just physically, but feeling that sense of momentum. And when something drags you down, that can make you feel like your life is just completely blah. And that's what that card can really re uh, reveal, is that, and as a spiritual message, it's letting you know that you can call the shots. If you don't feel happy about where you are, you can change that. What crosses you is the King of Cups. Now, this could be 
Um, the father of your child, if you have, if you're sharing custody with somebody and you want to leave and this person is manipulating you um, into, you know, guilting you. Obviously, if you share a child with someone, that has to be taken into account. It can be a father or some male authority. Uh, it's funny, I just got a message from someone who said that they were unsubscribing from me because I'm, I'm um, too sexist against men, and that is not true. When I say these things, it's not to bash men. I can, I can say them just as easily about women, but if I get a, a card that's associated with a man and it's in the challenge position, then I have to look at the challenging aspects of that person. Usually court cards are actual people. And so there could be somebody in your life. Um, it could be like a boss, too. Maybe you, your boss doesn't want you to go. And they're trying to do everything they can to guilt you, manipulate you. And the point isn't the exact uh, situation and how it applies for you, Aries. It's to look at... What is that um, energy behind the King of Cups in reverse? It's actually anyone who, especially in a parental capacity, it could even be like a facet of a mother, if the mother especially is very domineering. But anyone who tries to use emotions to keep you feeling obligated to them. I'm not talking about somebody expressing their emotions to you and saying, you know, I'm going to be so sad. If you leave, I want you to stay here. But somebody who is just thinking of themselves and what they want and not thinking about what would make you happy. By the way, the Three of Wands is about, let's not just look at it as being, um, you know, wanting to, to travel the world. It can be just wanting to broaden your horizon. So if you live someplace, let's say you live in a very small town and you've always wanted to live in a big city and maybe there's a specific one where, you know, it doesn't even have to be the nearest big city to you. It could be somewhere else. So people around you who still live in that area are naturally going to resist if you tell them these things, not only because they are going to probably miss you, but also because it challenges their um, actions, what they have done with their life. And this is where people get tripped up. They think they're doing something wrong, but really you're just helping to allow them to, to be inspired by you. People who are striving po positively in their life will take your actions as a positive thing for their life. They're not going to just denounce you as somebody who is abandoning them or making it all about them. They will look at you in a good light and they will say good things to you. They may be sad that you're going, but they will understand. The Three of Wands can also be about you wanting to have your own business and not just because you, you want to make money or you want to control your actions, but you may have something you really want to express. And this is the only way to have that freedom of expression. You may want freedom of movement too, Free, freedom to create your own hours and to do your own thing. That certainly could be what is happening. So, The advice is the Page of Swords, and this is a card about investigating everything. If you're going to move, investigating every possible thing. Is it, you know, how are you going, what's going to be your transportation situation? If you don't have a car, is there good transportation? Are, you know, looking things up online. We have such a, an amazing world these days. We don't have to just be in the dark. We can, we can actually find out things ahead of time. You could even look on... The, the Google, um, what is it called? Is it Google Earth? You could even look to see what the streets are like if they have sidewalks. 
if that's something that you like to do is walk and you don't want to have to be dependent on a car. Um, you can just see, does it look like a nice neighborhood, the place that you're planning on living? And also, what kind of stores? Are, are there going to be produce markets? Are you, you know, or are they just mainly fast food places because it's in the middle of nowhere and whatever? So all of these things are important. Also, if you get a job offer somewhere else, just don't take people's word for it. Make sure that the company is reputable. You know the drill. You may um, even have some situation where you have to hire a lawyer. Um, the Page of Swords may be more of a private detective or somebody, if this is a situation with a boss who is maybe not giving you a severance pay, if you want to leave, the Page of Swords can be about investigating that. Either you do it yourself or you could hire somebody um, to find out if they are doing something that's legal. And the outcome is the Page of Pentacles, which is a message. This can be a message to the Page of Swords, but it could be kind of a sharp message, sharp communication. This is uh, related to financial things. So this is also the card of the student. And some people, um, I was going to say depending on age, but not necessarily, because you may even be going to school as a middle-aged person for a specific endorsement or certification, but the Page of Pentacles can indicate receiving a small amount of money, but this could be money that you need in order to further your um, accomplishments, whatever it is that you're trying to do. There can be some kind of situation involving um, hearing about a job, starting a new job, and this may be in some other environment. And maybe that is the bridge that allows you to go there with, without too many worries because you actually receive a job offer in another city, in another country. And that is the final green light from the universe that this is going to happen for you. So let's take a look at these oracle cards. This is actually called a the Akashic Tarot, but it does not have the same amount of cards. This one is Reflection. And I'm going to read from the booklet. A full moon shines brightly over a quiet lake as a small ship glides gently through the water. The glow of the ship's lantern is reflected on the lake's surface, along with the moonlight from above. This card can sometimes show a trip. Okay, you guys. Particularly a trip over or by water. More important, it can reveal that you now have a direct line to your psychic gifts. Mic drop. You are also more aware of your emotions and more reflective of them. That's Queen of Cups too. You recognize the differences between your intuitive voice, which is calm and assured, and your lower emotional compulsions, which are urgent, urgent and sometimes fear-based. Let yourself gain even greater clarity and control over your emotions now. This would also be a great time for you to take up classes in meditation, psychic development, counseling, healing, and other psychological and spiritual arts, if you have such an interest. Your yin side is wide open. Uh, that, that Queen of Cups is a double yin, or fem, feminine energy. And your receptivity is high. Trust your inner voice and you will be guided to greatness. You can't go wrong with that, you know. And your inner voice is not necessarily what you think it is. Um, a lot of times people think that whatever they want is their inner voice, when in fact, some of the things that we want may be reactions against what we were, we were denied when we were young. So it's almost like a rebellion or just 
base desires, as Osho talked about, that that are really not for a high vibration, are just kind of like those things that are easy but not necessarily good in our life. Why am I picking up this? Okay, now this one is Green Terra, Supreme Protection. You are protected, cords are being cut, move beyond limitation, trust. I like those colors, a lot of blues. Okay. Green Terra. I know there's a white Terra, so I don't know what the difference is, but... Um, Legend has it that Avalokitsvara, the person of personification of perfect compassion, was looking down on the earth one day and cried tears when he witnessed all the suffering in the world. When the tears hit the earth, a lotus formed from which Tara, God, or Tara the goddess of compassion and light, was born. She has many the forms based on different colors and we have chosen green in this oracle because she brings a light of protection and safety with her. Always compassionate and loving, she helps us move into a new state of being and doing. You are safe. Protection is all around you. The worst is behind you and you are ready to move beyond the challenges that were set out for you. Cords are being cut between you and your past so that you can feel energetically clear and aware. Don't worry about recalling fearful experiences. They aren't going to be recreated now. Just acknowledge them and leave them behind so you can step into a space of spiritual and personal freedom. Green Tara has paid, placed a force field of complete love and acceptance around you. She is here to tell you that you no longer need to build up walls around your heart and that it's safe to trust what you feel and who is in your life today. And that's, that's the other thing. And I, I, I didn't say this because I really don't feel that this is all that common for Aries people, but this idea of being fear-based when you're making possible major changes in your life and that sense of what if, what if this doesn't work out, what if I made the wrong choice, and the unknown quantity. I think a lot of Aries people are actually stimulated by the unknown, but it's you're still human, right? So it's natural, normal to break out of your com fear, of breaking out of your comfort zone. But I have a feeling that you will, and whether it's in January, or February, we don't know. But it's a great time to reflect on these things at the beginning of a new year about what it is that you want to follow your bliss with and how you can get there, what kind of action steps you can take. Okay, Aries, I hope you enjoy this. If you would like a private reading, my website is rainandmoonastrology.com and the website is linked below. Have a blessed first two months of the year. Take care. Bye.